Hey guys, thank you for joining. We're gonna do a very seasonal uh, arrangement today um, with all fall colors. So, Cosmo is gonna do the flower reveal. So take it away, Cos. <laughs> we have hydrangeas that are super special locally grown. These are, hold on. PG hydrangeas, beautiful. Cafe au lait dahlias. I believe these are also local, but look how giant these are. That's my hand, that's the dahlia. And it's a beautiful corally peach color. Um, we have roses of different varieties. We have orange, orange spray roses. Um, we have red spray roses. And we're sort of transitioning from oranges to peaches to a little bit of yellow. The yellow is gonna come from this Crocosmia, which I love using. Little fun, beautiful flowers. Um, they're really cool and fun and extremely hardy. Coxcomb that looks like a brain in orange. These come in so many colors and I kept it to orange. I have brown amaranth. So, and then I have also another kind of rose here, amnesia, which is this beautiful um, mauve pinky tone that has like a slight gray undertone. So if you're, if I'm blending all these colors together, it should transition pretty well. I also have some darker tones too, like I, the spray rose that I showed you. Uh, burgundy ranunculus and then into dark dark burgundy estrantia Oops, I'll just take this all out so pink lysianthus burgundy estrantia and then black scabiosa in the summertime these were growing on the streets of Brooklyn and I would point them out to Reeve and tell them that it was one of my favorite flowers. So I'm sure Reeve, you recognize that. For the greenery, we have, oh, these bunny tail grass, which we'll plug in later. Look how tall they are. Grasses come so tall this time of year. And then the grasses will continue to keep growing. We have pistachio foliage. Um, we have pepper grass. This is very popular. This actually is like a weed. It grows on the side of the road. If you look at like a fence or something in a playground, they'll be like peeking out along the side of um, the fence. And then I also have sword firm. So these will, I'll plug in later on. So I'm gonna move these away because I'm kind of crowded now by these flowers, which I like, but I need space for the bees. So we're using a brown ceramic to keep with the warm fall tones. So to complement all the colors that we have going here. Um, pistachio and then the seeds. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. I have to ask the supplier, but it has like a beautiful scent to it and has such nice um, structure and character to the branches. So I'll find out more if this is actually from like the pistachio as in, you know, the nuts that we eat. I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start I prepped most of the flowers here. So this, maybe I'll cut it to about here. Let's see if I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut it right here. Take down, take off all the foliage at the bottom that's gonna be plugged into water. I'm not using any mechanics here. I'm just gonna use these branchy foliage as my initial mechanics. Um, a lot of people like to use either uh, chicken wire or taping and I do that too sometimes, but I'm I have enough materials here that I don't need to so, I'm gonna first lay down my foliage Okay So Let me go to my roses Using this how beautiful this was actually a uh, It was like this it's like gardening variety. I don't know what the name of it is. We'll find out if I do then I'll but look how big it got. So this is like blown open and this is a little bit closed, but it's still pretty big. 
Um, so I wanted to use that here. So I'm going to set that sort of low as the initial bloom. Cosmo, I think, is sad. <laughs> and then I'm going to plug, maybe cut it a little shorter, plug it in. I'm going to use my spray rose. Um, so it'll be like uh, like a, you know, like an ombre effect, but I probably won't give it a true ombre effect. It'll just have like a, an entire spectrum of these blooms that are happening. Uh, let me go with the coxcomb. Okay, I'm gonna take most of the foliage out. Maybe cut it to about here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going, I'm going to go into my amnesia roses. So I'm maintaining my crisscross technique. I'm using the, the crisscross. Yes, that's Cosmo. He sometimes shocks all of us by screaming all of a sudden. So <laughs> after he introduces the flowers, usually he goes into Pete's lap. But Pete's not here and he's not in the office right now. So he's alone, and that's why I think he was sad. <laughs> okay, so I went into the spray rose red. I'm gonna sort of plug it in down below so that we have like a little bit of a reflection of a dark color coming up. Okay. Um, let me not forget about this giant hydrangea. Cosmo distracted me. I actually wanted to use this in the beginning, but I can do it now, okay? So when you have like a hard stem like this, um, when you give it a, a sideways cut like that, like diagonal, sorry, I like to use my knife, but you can, you should like split it so that it has as much surface area as possible for the water to drink. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I like, Scrape it up over here so water gets in as much as possible. It's still pretty strong. These will dry just like this too. Nestle that in. Maybe I'll use another one. Keep this maybe slightly t taller. I'm gonna push you back a little bit so that maybe you can start seeing the shape. Okay, so I'm gonna keep plugging away. Okay. And also, today's the first day of school for my kids and I know that other people have started, oh I know, I always like to open these up. Um, school, so I realized that actually, school, Doing our two o'clock might get in the way of, um, you know, people finishing up their school, maybe their virtual se sessions and whatnot. So I'm considering changing my time to three o'clock. And if we do, we will make that announcement. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous Dahlia. Okay, now I'm gonna use my Lysianthus to bridge the gap between the and these Lysianthus are like a uh, like a champagne sort of pink color. Um, I'm gonna use it to bridge the gap between the peach and the pink and the orange. Okay. Keep the stems so delicate, but it's such a beautiful, beautifully strong. Flower. Do you recommend this method for anything woody? Yes, I do recommend that method for anything woody. Even roses, but actually roses you don't really need to. Okay. As long as for roses you give it this kind of a cut, I'll use my shears, this, that, it's okay. Okay. 
Now I, I have to maintain height now with all of my stems because the arrangement got taller. So now I don't want the things to start getting lost. So I'll keep these Lysianthus pretty tall. Let's see. So how about we follow that line with that pistachio right there. Okay. And then I also have other line, tall line ones like the Crocosmia. So I'm not worried about it, that it's looking, you know, it's not crowding, but I want the dimensionality. Uh, so I'm going to use my other spray rose red. Let's keep this right here. Okay. And then I'll plug in some of these brown amaranth as little accents. Keep these tall too. Let's see. Where should this one go? Right there is good. Let me see what you're seeing. Mm, okay. I'm gonna put this one a little lower, like that. And then you see this little hole? I will plug that with this, but still keeping it tall. Okay. And then I will use the other Dahlia, a short guy. Let me see what you're seeing. Right here. So that kind of plugged that hole right there. Okay. Um, and now I have these guys. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I love this. I love this one. I'm not sure what family it is. It looks like a freesia to me. I read somewhere it's maybe it's like the lily family maybe. But I will get that detail and let you know. Okay. Whatever I do, I'll spin it around so you can see afterwards. See, I'll keep that blade leaf right there. See? Not that it's getting tight, but now it's getting really filled out. Okay. And then I have this little very droopy guy. Uh, let me see from your view. I'll plug it in in the front so it'll come outwards. Pretty short. maybe sort of drape it over a flower here like that. Sort of like drape it over that rose maybe. Does it smell like a freesia? Oh, that's a really good question. Actually, freesias don't smell to me very much. I mean, it has a scent, like a flower, but it's not like a perfumey sort of scent. Um, and then here, Ooh, I don't want to lose my Lysianthus. My Lysianthus gives it so much character because of all the ins and outs. Um, another one right there that I can plug in right here. It has a damaged petal. Take that out. Hi, Karen. That's that. How do you ship an arrangement like this? I see from friend who wants it. We don't ship this arrangement. We ship the ones that we have products that are shippable that we can box up. Um, but an arrangement this big, it would be like impossible to ship. And there's water in it. And you should see some of these, you know, when the boxes get picked up or whatnot. Sometimes you don't want to see how your boxes are being handled. Okay, I have this one special ranunculus that, let me find a place. Where do I want to put that? Maybe right over here. 
Right there. My red shirt is also, you can't tell the effect of that. Okay, and then I have my, one of my all time favorites, these black scabiosas. So tall. I'm not gonna cut it down too much. Oops. I want you to stay where, where I want you to go, right there. And then, so I want to make you a little dramatic and let you poke out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Became a really full arrangement very fast, right? Um, now I want to put in my letter, let my filler foliage. So this is the sword fern, which I absolutely love to use. Hi Judy, hi Reva Maeve and baby Kayla. Reva Maeve, my kids started school today, but it was only orientation. Okay, now so this foliage, I'm gonna put in here, okay, and then maybe I'm going to put in this, I just clean, throw away, cut the stem, because I want it, maybe I want to even make it shorter, because I want it poking up a little bit, I don't want it to overpower the blooms, I want to sort of put it in between the blooms, so it's kind of cupping the blooms, okay, that. And then I have these fun pepper grass that it has so many, look at all these shoots. So I'm gonna cut them up. You don't even need a lot. A little goes a long way with the pepper grass. So like this, cut it pretty short and nestle it in. I don't want it to come up too much, but that's enough, right? It kind of complements it's kind of a good transition between the flowers that are low and the ones that are poking out. Ooh, these kind of broke. That happens a lot actually with the pepper grass. So you have to be very careful with it. Okay. They bend so quite easily, pepper grass. But if they don't bend, then they stay super stick straight. But once it's bent, game over. It's like a calla. Once that stem bends, game over. Cut it to where that bend is. That's all you can do. Okay. So, you're seeing that. Okay. I think that's enough for the pepper grass. I don't need too much more. Maybe I do want to put in this one last proposmia because it's so fun. Let me see what you're seeing. Right here. Okay. There we go. Um, ooh, and then the bunny tail. Where did I put it? Oh no, I put it back in the vase. Okay. So these grasses, these blades right here, kind of make it look a little, because they're kind of damaged a little, like natural foliage, um, but I'm going to cut a couple short, we don't even need too many here, take this foliage off, this foliage off, it's kind of bending, so take that off, and then keep it pretty tall, and how about I go the other way from that very pokey, outy uh, pistachio. Foliage. Okay. So let me give it a spin, a twirl, and see if we are all done. Is there anything anywhere here that I should cut shorter or fill in? I think this is pretty good. So imagine you put this in the center of your dining room table, and now you can have your Thanksgiving dinner. I can't believe it's Thanksgiving. It's gonna come like this. I know we're still in September, but actually at the beginning of um, 
August. I was like, we're already at the end of August. I don't know if anybody caught that. <laughs> Actually, I edit that out. Okay. So thank you so much for joining you guys. I'll take more pictures of this arrangement and give you all the details um, on the description of the post of all the ingredients that we use today. Um, and starting next week, I'm really considering changing the time to three o'clock because that's when everyone is back home from school or their schoolwork virtual class is all over and maybe they can join too because this is a really great way for me to connect with my own kids. Um, so if you have kids, if you have friends with kids, please you know tell them and give them the, in the details on when we meet. It's gonna be at three o'clock starting next week most likely. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Give me the top few. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.